we got some stuff to pray about this evening. Listen, yeah, we, we got some real things to lift up to the Lord this evening. Hey, Joy, what's going on? Good to see you Saturday. Yeah, it's prayer time, y'all. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It is prayer time. You know how we always do uh, as we get ready to start. Hey, sis, what's going on? Uh, you know, y'all know how we do as we always start. Like, tag, and share. Uh, make sure you like, tag, and share this. Um, get some other folks on. Invite them to come and pray with you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be pressing through and pray tonight. There's a lot of things we gotta lift up tonight. Uh, there's some warfare that we gotta enter into tonight. Um, you know, there there is the Bible says uh, as Jesus spoke to the disciples, he said. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take by force. And there are some things, some victories that have to be bought, have to be fought and won aggressively and militantly. There's some victories that we can't just stumble into. Uh, and I knew hope y'all have to heard me say, in life we don't always get what we deserve, we get what we fight for. And so there's some things we gotta fight for in prayer tonight. Uh, so we'll, uh, we're gonna give another minute for folks to jump on here. Uh, remember, like, tag, and share this. Uh, start a watch party, share this with some folks. Invite them to pray. It's a time of prayer and intercession. We're going to be praying for you all, and we're going to be praying for our city tonight, especially um, the city of Chicago. You know, we need a lot of prayer in our city. Um, but there's some other things that I want to lift up tonight uh, as we prepare to kind of press in and dive into this place of prayer tonight. Um, yeah, that's right. It says, take it by force. That's Bible. Um, that the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take by force. That um, there are things in which we have to uh, we have to militantly go after in prayer. That you know we don't plead with the devil, we don't bargain with the devil, um, we don't negotiate with the devil. You know when you look at foreign policy, uh, um, one of the policies of the United States government is that they do not negotiate with terrorists. And sometimes we have to take that approach when it comes to the enemy. Um, we do not negotiate with demonic terror. That when the enemy comes in with terror, we do not negotiate with the enemy. Um, there is but one option and one recourse in this. Uh, devil, you got to get up out of here. And you got to take your hands up off some stuff. So um, that's where we're going tonight. Um, as we begin tonight, I, I want to begin... Uh, praying, I, I, I said that we, tonight we're going to be praying for a couple things. One, uh, the peace of the city, and then also the oil of joy. And the reason I said that, uh, Isaiah, I want to read uh, from Isaiah 61, verse 3. Uh, it says, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I want you to pay particular attention to the part of the verse that says the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Um, uh, in the spirit, I have been sensing since Sunday night a very strong spirit of heaviness settling over the city. Uh, I began to notice it Sunday night uh, and, then, and, I, and I couldn't quite trace it. And then overnight as I began to see the videos of what was happening downtown and other parts of the city, I begin to understand it, that, that, that there is a way in which uh, all of the things that have happened, and some have even been dealing with kind of a low-grade depression uh, over the last few months because of everything that's been happening in our country uh, and everything that's been happening. Because when, when you are sensitive emotionally and when you're sensitive in the spirit, uh, there's a way in which things that happen in the world around you and outside of you begin to affect you in ways that they don't always affect other people. And, and so uh, I've been I've been noticing how a lot of people have been internalizing some of what we've been seeing in the world around us. We've been hearing a lot of death this year through, because of the pandemic. Uh, we've been hearing a, a lot of hurt and anger and frustration and even hopelessness because of the racial climate in this country and, and, and even despair uh, because of the economic climate and status in this country. And this has become a perfect storm for the enemy uh, because many people are struggling with this weight of depression, discouragement, hopelessness, and despair 
and, and this feeling like almost like this a big wet blanket has been thrown over your head and, and you don't see a way out and it's almost like you're in a dark tunnel that does that there's no light in there and there's no end to it and, and i believe that, that that there is a spirit that accompanies this isaiah 61 and 3 says that he that god gives us the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness hear me and hear me clearly uh heaviness and depression is a spirit now i'm not negotiating negating uh mental health and, and getting professional help if you're dealing with things that could be clinical depression uh, i'm not negating that uh, do deal with those things if you need to talk to a therapist please by all means do um but there, but there's also a spirit of heaviness that comes upon people. And I want to deal with the spirit of heaviness as we prepare to go into prayer about this thing tonight. Uh, matter of fact, again, like I'm not just saying this for y'all to just share it, but I believe that there are some people who are struggling with the spirit right now and God wants to set them free tonight. So we're going to begin to pray about the spirit of heaviness. But, but I believe that depression, heaviness, discouragement is a spirit. There's a spiritual root to it. Now I know there's natural, chemical, and emotional things that can happen. Uh, but I believe there's also a spirit. Uh, you know, the Bible says, that in, in, in uh, 1 Samuel, that an evil spirit would trouble Saul, and he'd get into these moods, and when David would begin to play skillfully, the Bible says that David played skillfully, and the evil spirit departed Saul. And so many times the moods and the things that you feel, sometimes you might just say, well, I'm just in a funk. I'm just not feeling it today. You know, I'm just in a mood. I'm just, I'm just not quite myself. Have you ever said that? You had a day where you just say, you know, you don't even know why you can't trace it. You can't really put a finger on it. And you just say, I'm just not myself today. I just, I'm just not feeling it today. You know, this just ain't, I, this just ain't it today. Uh, many times, that is a spirit of heaviness. And how do you know the difference between a spirit and just normal emotion? See, uh, when you can't trace it, or when there is no natural explanation for it, it is often a spirit. Let me say that one more time. When there's something that you cannot trace or pinpoint, and, and there is no natural explanation for it, it is often a spirit. And so when the Bible says that, that God will give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, what God is saying is that this spirit of heaviness can come upon you. And, and it's almost like it begins to overtake you. It, it's almost like a bear has just jumped on your back and, and, and you can't shake it off. You don't know what to do with it. That is a spirit of heaviness. And we're gonna come against that thing tonight. But I want us to see in the scripture, there are two things that he said, the oil of joy for mourning. What is mourning? Mourning is when you go through a grief process, when you go through pain and loss. Mourning is when you lament what was and, you real, and you've come to grips with your pain and your loss. And so many of us now are dealing with a sense of mourning. And sometimes we think mourning is only in the sense of, a, of the death of a loved one or, some, or, or something like that. But you can mourn many things. You can mourn the loss of a relationship. You can mourn the loss of a job. You can mourn the loss of a home. Uh, many, you can mourn any kind of loss. And there's a sense of mourning that is that we've been dealing with all around this country for the last several months. Many people have been dealing with mourning because not just the deaths that have happened, but because of the losses that have, that have come and the ways in which people's lives have been impacted and affected. But he said that he will give you the oil of joy for mourning. What is the oil of joy? See, see, joy is not happiness. Uh, you know, many times we think, I just want to be happy. And y'all remember that song that Pharrell did many, uh, few, some years back, because I'm happy, because I'm happy, right? Yeah, yeah, clap along if you feel like a room without a room. Uh, the happy, that, that, the, the, the word happy, it, it has the same root word as happenings or happenstance. And so many times happiness or, or, or determining if you're happy is tied to your circumstances or your situations. Happenings, what is happening in your life can cause you to be happy. But joy is different than happiness. I didn't, we didn't have Monday Night Lab last night, so I need to teach a little bit before we pray. Uh, see, but, but so happiness is different from joy. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Joy gives you strength. And let me say that one more time. Joy can give you strength. What does that mean? Joy is different from happiness because joy is something deep down on the inside of you that is based in the reality of who God is and what God is doing in your life. And that's what joy is. See, joy is a, is a wellspring of life deep down on the inside of you that the Lord will give you and cause to bubble up and birth up out of you 
that has nothing to do with your situation. You can have joy in the middle of unhappy situations and circumstances because happiness can be temporary and it is very fleeting. How many of y'all have felt happiness in one moment uh, but felt unhappy in the next, right? Uh, but joy, uh, the, old, the old saints used to sing a song that said, this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me and the world can't take it away. And so one of the things we have to understand, there's a difference between happiness and joy. And so when the Bible says that he will give you the oil of joy for mourning, that is important. Now, oil always symbolizes the anointing and the presence of God. Remember that. Whenever the, 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 the priest would always cause the oil to be poured over people when they anoint them, right? Oil was symbolic of the presence of the Holy Spirit. When the oil began to flow, the Spirit of God was beginning to move. And so now, so, so oil symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the oil of joy. So joy comes from the Holy Spirit. How do you know that from that one verse? Because in Galatians, the Bible tells us that the fruit of the Spirit, the first one, one of the first ones is joy, right? Uh, joy, peace. All, those are fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians. And so joy comes from the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit, and it is birthed by the Spirit of God. And so if you're going to operate in joy, that's why he says he's going to give you the oil of joy, the anointing of joy, the grace of joy. In other words, the Holy Ghost can pour joy into your life in the middle of your mourning, in the middle of your grief, in the middle of your loss, in the middle of your suffering and struggle, in the middle of your pain and frustration, the oil of joy can begin to flow in your life because see, happiness waits on your circumstances to change. Joy uh, waits on your perspective to change. See, because you can be in the same situation and, and still have joy. Nothing's changed about your situation, but you've got joy because the, the oil of joy has begun to flow over your life. So he says I'm, that he will give you in Isaiah 61 and 3, he will give you the oil of joy for mourning. But then the next thing he says, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, I said before that, 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 that heaviness is a spirit, depression. Those things, that there's a spiritual root to them. Now, there's some clinical, again, there's clim clinical and chemical things that happen there, but there is also a spirit. And so, but that spirit can come on you. And there's some of us who can wear heaviness. We can wear depression like a cloak, like a garment. But he says in Isaiah 61 and 3 that, that we will wear the garment of praise, that he will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In other words, you will trade that spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise. And so, why, why a garment of praise? And because, you know, one of the irony, well, ironic things is when you're in a place of heaviness, but the last thing you really want to do is praise. You don't feel like praising uh, when, when you're heavy and when you're down because, because we associate praise with being ecstatic. And, and you know, and the Bible talks about the, 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 the word for praise in the Old Testament, you know, Shabbat, which is to make a loud and a joyful, exuberant noise. Halal, which is where we get the, the, the where we get our word hallelujah which is a calamorous praise uh, and those are all associated with kind of excitement and heavy emotion but when you notice now when when there's a heaviness on you you don't feel calamorous you don't feel like being expressive you matter of fact when there's heaviness on you strongly you don't even feel like talking really much you you, you get kind of quiet anybody ever felt that before when that heaviness that depression comes on you you kind of shut people out you kind of shut everything out you pull away you begin to keep quiet. You kind of shut things off. And, and, and because one of the things that happens is when the enemy wants to fight you with depression and heaviness, the first thing he does is to shut your mouth. See, the Bible says in Hebrews that that's the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. See, because praise is often associated with what comes out of your mouth. And so the enemy has to shut down the praises of God from coming out of your mouth so he will cause the spirit of heaviness to come upon you. Why is this important? Uh, because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And, and so if, if praise is released out of our mouths and God inhabits our praise, when you open your mouth, you can begin to draw God in your direction. And so for the enemy to, to stop you from drawing God in your direction, he will stop you from opening your mouth. The, one of the best ways for the enemy to, to stop God from moving in your direction is to shut you up and to shut you down and to keep you quiet. Uh, you know, the, the old saying, closed mouths don't get fed. And so, uh, you know, the, uh, so, so you have to, uh, what God will do is it, you have this divine exchange that you will put on the garment of praise. See, you notice that one of the things about a garment is it don't put itself on. You don't get up in the morning and say, uh, sweater, come on here. 
Uh, no, you have to pick up the sweater or pick up the jacket and you put one sleeve in and you put the other sleeve in and you put it on and you wear it. And that's how praise is. You got to sometimes choose to put on praise. You got to pick it up and, and put in one sleeve at a time if you got to, because it's not just going to climb up on you on its own. And so one of the things that God would desire for us to do in this season is to begin to wear the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, because heaviness is a spirit. And, and, and what God wants to do is to come in our in our direction and, and begin to inhabit our uh, uh, our presence. Uh, but but it happens through praise. Again, he inhabits the praise of Israel. And so because God inhabits the praises of his people, we, we have to uh, begin to draw near to his presence. Second Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible says that four nations will come into war against Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. And the Bible says that Jehoshaphat appointed singers and worship leaders. And he had the priests come out with trumpets. And the Bible says when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the enemy. Let me just tell you, I had, there are moments in my life where I know that I've been fighting the spirit of heaviness. And, and, and I, there are times where I would just shut up in my prayer room and, and begin to turn on some pray, some worship music. And then, you know what, and, and sometimes, it, 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 not just the slow worship music, sometimes I would turn on some shout music and put on a praise break and begin to dance before the Lord until I felt the thing lift because God inhabits the praises of his people. And see, one of the things is when you begin to praise God, the enemy hates praise. The enemy, that, see, this is why praise and worship is important in church uh, and, and even in your personal life. The enemy hates a praiser. Uh, you know, that's why the Bible would say, send Judah first. When they were going to battle, send Judah first. Send praise first. Let your praise go before you. If you want to do a study, look how many times in the Old Testament when the people of Israel were going into battle that they won battles. They did not even have to fight all because they shouted or because they began to praise God. And, and see, I'm not just being trite or being preachy here, but this is real. I have lived this thing. I have lived my life as a praiser uh, from a young age. I've seen the power of praise in warfare, that when you want to war against the enemy, when you want to bind the hand of the enemy, when you want to shut down the attack of the enemy, you have to begin to open up your mouth. That's See, that's why Job said uh, that uh, all the days of my appointed time, I'll wait until my change come. Notice that when Job was going through everything he went through, he, the, it all came down to what he, what he allowed to come out of his mouth. That's why when his wife said, you ought to just curse God and die, he said, you speak like a foolish woman because the power of life and death is in the tongue. And if I let the wrong thing slip out of my mouth at the wrong time, I'm sealing my fate. Uh, but I got to side with God and I've got to guard the confession that I allow to come out of my mouth. And, and see, even if I don't feel good about my situation, I can still feel good about my God because God is yet faithful and God is yet good. It is of the Lord's mercy, Jeremiah said, that we're not consumed. Thy compassions fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. I dare you to begin to just say, God, you are faithful. God, you are just. God, you are right. God, there is none like you. And when you begin to fill the atmosphere with your praise, watch that thing begin to lift off you. Watch that spirit of heaviness jump up off you. Watch your whole mood and atmosphere begin to shift all because of praise. I'm a living witness, y'all. I ain't telling what you heard. I'm telling you what I know. I'm I'm telling you, I have lived this thing. I've lived this thing for 26 years and I've seen the power of praise happen in my life in various seasons. One of the hardest things is to praise God when, when stuff around you is not going right and going well. But in my darkest moments, in my darkest hours, I've just gotten before the Lord and lifted my hands and began to open my mouth and begin to praise the Lord and worship and pray in the Holy Ghost. And, and the Spirit of God began to fill the atmosphere and, 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 and something begin to shift something begin to break all in that moment because he gives us the, the the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and we're going to war against the spirit of heaviness tonight but i had to teach a little of this thing tonight uh, before we begin to war against it because you know the old cartoon gi do say now you know and knowing is half the battle because you got how you what you know going into the battle help determines how you how you, helps to determine how you fare in the battle if you don't understand the strategy of the enemy it is sometimes hard to fight against the enemy but you have to understand the power of praise listen your praise is like dynamite okay matter of fact there's a test i used to give people uh, that I, I i would challenge people that when you get alone with god say hallelujah 10 times real loud and see, don't that don't something begin to break off you? 
uh, because th this it, it is power in that thing. It's like dynamite. It will begin to shift your very atmosphere. The whole room that you're in will begin to shift. Uh, matter of fact, let's begin to pray. We're going to war against the spirit tonight. I feel my help tonight. But we're going to begin with praise. Come on. Father, we bless you. We magnify you. Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. Come on, just put some hallelujahs on your lips right there. We say hallelujah to your name, God. In the middle of our battle with the spirit of heaviness, we say hallelujah. We say glory to your name, God. There is none like you. God, you are good and your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. Come on, God, there is none like you. God, there's none beside you. Come on, uh, uh, beside you, there is no other. Before for you there is no other there's none like our god we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise god we bless your name we magnify and exalt your name hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Come on right there. I dare somebody, even wherever you are, as long as you're not driving, I dare you to begin to clap your hands and begin to put a hallelujah on your lips. Hallelujah, God. We give you praise. Hallelujah, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you the honor. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. God, your word says that you who began a good work in us, that you are faithful to perform it. Mm. Uh, there's somebody on here tonight you need to know that God who began a good work in you is faithful to perform it uh, because there's somebody that is struggling with the faithfulness of God because something started but it don't look like it's going to finish right it don't look like it's going to finish well and you don't feel like you're going to finish strong but I dare you to quote the scripture that says he who has begun a good work in me he will complete it God we thank you that you are faithful to complete what you start. You are the author and finisher of our faith, meaning you, you begin it, you write the script, and you finish it out. So we say hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Your name is above every name. Your word declares there is but one name under heaven, given among men whereby we must be saved, and that name is the name of Jesus. Your word says, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess of things in heaven and in earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, we declare that you are Lord. You're Lord over our mind, and we submit our mind to you. We submit our thoughts to you, every part of our thinking, oh God. There's some who've been dealing with a stronghold of the mind. There's some who've been dealing with wayward thoughts, God. There's some who've been assaulted in their thinking. I bind the spirit of death right now in the name of Jesus. There's some that have even been having thoughts of death. That, I, that if this is good as it gets, then I don't want to do it any longer. The devil is a liar. I bind the hand of the enemy right now. I bind the spirit of death. I bind suicide. He In the name of Jesus. And I lose joy right now. I lose the spirit of death. Every seed the enemy has sown of death over you. Some, some, somebody's even felt the spirit of death on you, like hovering over you, even hovering around you. Uh, there's even a heaviness when you walk in your house. It even feels like a darkness in your house. I, but I curse that spirit right now. I bind it in the name of Jesus, and I loose the oil of joy. Angels of the Lord begin to move and minister right now. God, you said in your word that you inhabit the praises of your people. So God, right now, even as we declare hallelujah even as we put thank you jesus on our lips even as we exalt and lift up your name we thank you that you're now inhabiting our praise so come on god inhabit our praise come on we lift up come on we, we rise as judah come on zion come on your word says send judah first send the army of praisers we rise now as the nation of judah we rise now as an army of praisers we rise now as a people of praise and we declare that you are good we declare that you are kind we declare that you are faithful we thank you god that in you we live and move and have our being we thank you that in you there is no failure we thank you god that whatever you started you will complete we thank you god that you are true to your word. We thank you, God, that what you have declared, it is coming to pass in our lives. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word is forever. And we declare in the name of Jesus that, God, you got us.
that you got a hold of us, God, because Jesus, you said that you put us in the in the palm of the Father's hand, and no man can pluck us out. So we thank you tonight that we're in your hand, and we're in good hands tonight, God. We thank you, God, that we're in your care. We thank you, God, that we're in your service. We thank you, God, that we're in covenant with you, and because we're in covenant with you, the enemy cannot do anything except by the permission of God. Father, now in the name of Jesus, we war against the spirit of heaviness that is even settled over the city of Chicago. The spirit of heaviness that has invaded people's homes. The spirit of heaviness that has come over people's emotions even over the last few months. The spirit of heaviness that has clouded our judgment and even our thought life. We bind the spirit of heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. Every thought that comes from the spirit of heaviness, every word that we've induced to speak but come from the spirit of heaviness, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. You spirit of heaviness, take your hands off God's people. Take your hands off God's possession. Take your hands off God's son. Take your hands off God's daughter. We bind you when we tie your hands in the name of Jesus. And we command you to flee. We command you in the name of the Lord to take up your weapons and flee. We bind your power right now in the name of Jesus. And we loose the joy of the Lord. We loose the strength of God. God, you said in your word that the joy of the Lord would be our strength. So now loose joy, God, because you said in Isaiah 61 and 3 that you would give us the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you that praise is replacing heaviness in the name of Jesus. We arise in praise. Come on. We ascend in praise. Come on. Come on. We arise in praise. We ascend in praise. We declare, God, you are welcome in this place. Come on. We make you welcome here. Come Holy Spirit and fill this place. Fill every home even as they're watching and listening. Come on, fill every person right now. Give us a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, come on joy. Come on joy right now. May the joy of the Lord come on. May the joy of the Lord come forth. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we press into joy. We press into strength. In the name of Jesus, and we bind the spirit of heaviness. We bind depression right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind discouragement, hopelessness, and despair. In the name of Jesus, and we lose joy. We lose peace. We lose the shalom of God. Oh, Holy Ghost of God right now. Your word says, the anointing lifts the burden and destroys the yoke according to Isaiah 10 and 27. And right now, God, loose an anointing over every individual's life. Loose an anointing in every home. Loose an anointing over every family. Loose an anointing, O oh God, to lift every burden. The burden of heaviness. The burden of depression. The burden of hopelessness. The burden of despair. The burden right now of discouragement. We lift it right now. We command it to lift. We command it to go. In the name of Jesus. And we lose joy. We lose the peace of God. Come on. We lose rejoicing. Come on, God, let a halal praise erupt out of your people. You said in your word that if we believe upon you, Jesus, out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. So let a river of life begin to flow. Let rivers of living water begin to flow. Every place where the enemy has sown death right now, every place where the enemy has sown depression right now, every place where the enemy has sown despair right now, hopelessness. Uh, that God, we come against it right now. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost of God, cause a smile to return to the faces of your people. Cause rejoicing to return to your people, God. Cause your people to dance again. Cause your people to laugh again. Cause your people to smile again. Cause your people to rejoice again. Oh, God, there's somebody right here 
They're trying to remember the last time that they were happy genuinely. There's somebody that's trying to remember the last time they smiled and really meant it. There's somebody that's trying to remember the last time they were they really had true excitement about anything. But we come against the places where the enemy has sown death right now. The enemy has sown death in their soul. And we command it to be plucked up from the root right now. Every seed of death, every seed of depression, every seed of despair, we cancel it right now. We bind it now. Devil the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we lose joy right now. We lose the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord come and break forth. Come on. We're breaking forth into this thing tonight. We're breaking forth into this thing tonight. The joy of the Lord is coming forth. The strength of God is coming forth. There's somebody you almost feel like you, 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 you're trying to tread water or you're like you're sinking in quicksand and you have no strength uh, to come out of it. But I declare that there's strength coming to you right now, that the Lord is lifting you up out of that low place, that the Lord is lifting you up. Ah, be lifted right now. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. We declare in the name of Jesus that the joy of the Lord is coming upon you even now, and the strength of God be upon you now. Let May the strength of God stand upon you. May the strength of God stand up in you. May joy be stirred up in your spirit and your belly. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost of God, let joy be stirred up in your people. Let excitement be stirred up in your people. Let your people find peace again. Let your people rejoice again. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy on every hand and we declare joy to flow. We declare the peace of God to flow. We declare your love to flow. In the name of Jesus, God, remind us of your word. Remind us of your promise and remind us of your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. It's pressing. It's breaking. I declare it's breaking in the name of Jesus. I declare it's breaking in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, it's breaking in the name of Jesus. Come on, I feel the breaking of day. I feel the breaking of day. I feel the breaking of day in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost of God, give us the ability to press into your presence. Give us stamina to press into you. Give us strength to press into you like never before. Give us strength to press into you till we feel our help. Give us strength to press into you until we feel joy come forth. Give us the ability to press into you until we feel peace begin to flow. You said in your word that the peace of God that passes understanding would guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. So now God calls your peace to guard our hearts. Calls your peace to guard our mind. Peace of God begin to flow, begin to settle on every person right now. Everyone that is watching and listening, may the peace of God be upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Where there are we bind anxiety. We bind stress and fear, and we lose peace right now. In the name of Jesus, we lose peace. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, we're going to begin to pray for the peace of this city, uh, because this city has been under a blanket of heaviness. This city has been under, it's almost like a gloomy cloud has settled over the city the last couple of days. Uh, but he said in Jeremiah 29 and 7, he said to pray for the peace and prosperity of the city whereby I've called you, caused you to be carried away to. Because he said, if it prospers, you will prosper. He, he, he's, Jeremiah is speaking to a people in captivity. They were carried away to, in captivity to Babylon. But he told them, in the middle of your captivity, in the middle of whatever you're going through, pray for the peace of the city. Uh, regardless of how you feel about the city, pray for the peace of the city. Because if it prospers, you will prosper. And so tonight, we're going to begin to pray for the peace of the city and for every person within the city uh, because there are territorial spirits there are ruling spirits there are principalities that settle over regions and territories and and i believe that that that, that, that is part of what many of you have been dealing with the last couple of days that there is a, a demonic blanket and a force that is going to settle over the city and we pray right now god 
according to Jeremiah 29 and 7, you said to pray for the peace of the city. So we pray right now that you would cause your peace to permeate the city. God, right now in the name of Jesus, loose ministering and warring angels in for, to come forth into the city. God, loose angels into the city right now to displace every principality, to displace every ruler of darkness, to displace every work of the enemy that is in this city right now. We pray for our mayor. We lift her up before you. We plead the blood over her life. We pray that you would touch her mind. We pray that you give her wisdom. We pray that you give her strength to govern. In the name of Jesus, God, may she act judiciously. May she act wisely. We lift up our police superintendent, God, Superintendent Brown. We ask that you would touch and cover him and all those who walk alongside him. We ask that you would give him wisdom, God. Give him wisdom to lead. In the name of Jesus, we pray for every community leader, every alderman, every elected official, every activist in this city. We pray that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you would expose every demonic agenda. God, expose every demonic agenda that is contrary to your will and your plan. God, everyone that is manipulating situations and circumstances for ungodly purposes and aims, God, expose every demonic agenda in the name of Jesus and may a kingdom agenda be brought forth. May the truth of God reign. May the, may the truth of God be brought forth, God. We pray that because your word says righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne, we pray that righteousness and justice would come forth in this city. We pray for the peace of our city. We pray for even other cities around this country that are dealing with similar things. We pray, God, that your righteousness and justice would come forth in these cities. But we pray especially for the city of Chicago tonight. In the name of Jesus, may the rest of this week, God, see a breaking forth. May the rest of this week, God, see a lifting, God. May the rest of this week see even, even inklings of joy coming forth, inklings of peace coming forth. God, cause the peace to return in this city like never before. God, give this city peace like it has never seen. We pray for an end to all violence in this city. We pray for an end to lawlessness. We bind lawlessness in the name of Jesus. God, we come against uh, uh, even, we, we pray that this city would come to the place of repenting for even over a century of racism, of segregation, of injustice. But we pray right now, God, that your truth and righteousness would reign forth in this city, God. God, raise up intercessors all over this city. We pray that you raise up prayer warriors all over this city. On the west side, on the south side, God. On the north side, on the east side, God. We pray that in every corner and every corridor of the city, you raise up intercessors, God. Even around this nation, God. Raise up a whole new army of intercessors, God. Raise up an army of intercessors, God, who will pray forth your promises. God, you said in your word to pray that kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, raise up intercessors who have clean hands and pure hearts, whose hearts are not lifted up in pride, who, who, ha who have their hearts attuned toward heaven. Raise up intercessors, O oh God, who will pray forth your promises, who will pray for your kingdom to come, and who will pray for your will to be done. Raise up intercessors tonight, God, who will cry loud and spare not in the name of Jesus. But we pray, O oh God, that peace would come in this city like never before. We pray for your joy to come in the city like never before, God. We pray for prosperity in the city. God, for every economic downturn that has hit the city, for businesses that have struggled financially in this season, for homes and families that have struggled financially in this season, we pray for prosperity to come forth. We pray for the peace and the prosperity of the city, God. We come against the violence and we pray that you would bring forth prosperity. Send now prosperity, God. Send now prosperity, God. Send now prosperity, God. Let finances begin to flow in this city like never before. Let revenue begin to flow in this city like never before. In the name of Jesus, we pray for a return of financial increase in this city, God. We pray for a return of prosperity to the city, God. In the name of Jesus, we bind poverty and lack. Yeah, we even we come against the spirit of poverty and lack that has racked this city, the, the pockets of poverty that have existed in this city for over a hundred years. We bind poverty right now in the name of Jesus, and we lose increase. We lose overflow in the name of Jesus. Let prosperity come to the city, God. 
Let new entrepreneurs be raised up and let them flourish and thrive. God, may make commerce thrive in, with justice, God. We pray, oh God, for financial increase. Raise up new homeowners in this city, God. God, may resources be dispersed, God, equitably, Father. We pray that this city would not be the tale of two cities where there are a handful of few people who are, who, who, who are extremely wealthy and masses of extremely poor. But we pray, oh God, that you begin to level the playing field, that you would that you would cause an elevation, God, in this city. God, begin to lift some people out of poverty in this city. God, give people strategies to make money, to receive wealth, to see a new financial situation. Raise up entrepreneurs, God, who can hire people and become employers, God. Take someone from being an entrepreneur to being an employer. In the name of Jesus, God, take someone from being a single source entrepreneur, uh, a sole source uh, vendor, God, to being an employer of many. In the name of Jesus, God, for every person that is a sole source entrepreneur, God, expand their business to the point that they have to begin to hire other people. We pray right now because you said in your word that you own the cattle on a thousand hill, on a thousand hills. So tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, God, that you would let a portion and, a, and a, a provision of your prosperity begin to fall upon us like right now in the name of Jesus. Let it descend like rain. May a rain of increase come. May a rain of prosperity come. May a rain of overflow come. We bind lack right now. For every person that is struggling financially, we bind the spirit of lack right now and we decree and declare that wealth and riches are in your house. We decree and declare money comes to you now. We lose checks in the mail. We lose cash in the hand and we lose deposits in your account right now. In the name of Jesus. God let food be on every table. God let no one's cupboards and cabinets be bare and empty. In the name of Jesus. God let no one's gas tank go empty. In the name of Jesus, but may there be increase. God, cause someone's business to double in a month. Cause someone's business to triple in a month. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that wealth and riches are in our house. We decree and declare that money cometh to us now, not for greed or selfish gain. But because you said according to your word in Genesis as you spoke to Abraham that you shall be blessed and you shall be a blessing. You said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that you give us power to get wealth. So God now give us power to get wealth. In the name of Jesus, God, raise up kingdom millionaires in this city. Raise up kingdom millionaires around the country who will finance and underwrite the kingdom. God, raise up some kingdom millionaires who can write seven-figure checks. To for kingdom purposes. Raise up kingdom millionaires, God. Raise up kingdom millionaires, God. In the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, God, raise up some global businesses that will do business and commerce in Africa, that will do business and trade and commerce in Asia, that will do business in Europe, God. Raise up some, God, take somebody's business from local to, to, to global, God. In the name of Jesus, take somebody's business to being a local neighborhood business, to being a global business that does trade and commerce and business in, in various continents. Oh, I don't even know where it's coming from. In the name of Jesus, uh, Holy Ghost of God, we bind all lack right now. In the name of Jesus, uh, for every person that is struggling to pay a bill, uh, for every person who's watching their bank account dwindle, uh, we bind lack right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, and even as you fed Elijah uh, by the brook of Kareth, God, cause now ravens to be sent forth to bring provision to your people. Uh, we lose provision over the people of God tonight. Uh, let provision be in every home. Let provision be the portion of every family. Uh, lose your provision, O oh God, and lose your protection. In the name of Jesus, God, raise up your people, God. Raise up a bastion of glory amongst your people tonight, God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, push back the darkness and push back the flight of the armies of the enemy. God, there's, there's some in whom the enemy is trying to use their finances as a source of depression and discouragement. And he's using financial lack as a way to bring heaviness. And that spirit of heaviness is tied to financial lack. I bind right now all lack in the name of Jesus. And I lose provision. I lose overflow. And I lose increase. In the name of Jesus, I lose increase, I lose overflow, and I lose provision over your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, according to the word of God, wealth and riches are in your house. Matter of fact, somebody type that on your screen. The Bible says it. Wealth and riches are in my house. Come on. Wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in my house. Matter of fact, when poverty and lack tries to show up at your house, you better do them like, like what happens when the mailman brings you the neighbor's mail. And you got to return the sender because, uh, watch this, sometimes you get mail that don't belong to you because they gave you the neighbor's mail. And you got to say to the postman or the post lady, uh, listen, you brought this to the wrong house. Uh, th th this is not my address. Or then sometimes you may get mail of somebody, maybe somebody that uh, if you moved to a house recently, uh, th maybe they still are mailing the person who used to live there before you. And you have to write return to sender or addressee unknown You got, because you got to say, look, I don't, th the addressee is unknown. In other words, the person you send this to don't live here anymore. And so you got to write return to sender and addressee unknown when the enemy tries to bring lack to you. When the enemy tries to bring poverty to you, you got to write address the unknown, return to sender, uh, because they don't live here anymore. And, and you got to tell the enemy, I, I, I don't even know who you sent this to, you got the wrong house. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that every that every every mailing, every letter, every parcel uh, the, of lack and struggle and poverty that the enemy has been sending to you, that the enemy has been bringing to your address, I decree that it is stamped return to sender and it returned from whence it came in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, return to sender. And we declare wealth and riches are in our house. Come on. Wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in our house. Wealth and riches are in my house. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, uh, when, we, when we get off of here tonight, somebody needs to begin to go through your house and begin to lay hands on everything in your house and, and say and just command everything in my house got to prosper. Matter of fact, somebody needs to lay hands on your debit card. If you got your debit, I, I, don't, even, I don't even do this kind of stuff, y'all know. But if you got your wallet, your debit card, your credit cards, whatever you got on you right now. I, I, get it in your hand real quick. We're gonna do this real quick. I don't. I don't. Y'all know I don't normally do this kind of thing in prayer uh, because I don't like. I don't want to feel gimmicky. But I, I feel this tonight. Uh, grab your debit card. Grab something that symbolizes your finances or your bank account. If you got a bank account statement uh, in your house or with you right now, grab it and uh, and begin to lay hands on it right now. And Father, now in the name of Jesus, we speak to finances. We speak to bank accounts, and we command increase come forth. We command overflow to come forth. Money come now to God's people. Money come now to God's people. Money come now to God's people. Come on, I decree and declare. Uh, come on, I open up your mouth and begin to declare. I am a money magnet. Money comes to me. Money flows in my life and money flows in my home. Wealth and riches are in my house. Come on, I decree and declare that my income is increasing and my debt is reducing. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I will not be bound by poverty and lack. I am the I am the favorite of God, and wealth and riches are in my house. I am the favorite of God, and lack is not my portion. I am the favorite of God, and debt is not my portion. I am the favorite of God, and prosperity is my portion. Increase is my portion. Overflow is my portion. Come on. Come on. We bind poverty and lack right now in the name of Jesus. I speak over every bank account. I speak over every home and I command overflow. I command increase in the name of Jesus. May your bank accounts overflow. May your bank accounts overflow in the name of Jesus. May you know no lack in this season. 
May you know no lack in this season. There is no lack for the righteous. The psalm is declared, I once was young, but now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Come on. My seed will not have to beg for bread. But my children, the generations behind me, won't have to struggle like I struggled. But the Bible says a good man or woman leaves an inheritance to their children's children. Come on. I decree and declare that not only will I have enough to live off of, but I'll have enough to leave behind when I'm gone. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Ah, come on. I'm creating generational wealth. I am creating legacy. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Y'all just give me five more minutes. There's one more thing I want to pray for. There's one more prayer talk that we got tonight. But I felt the thing. Y'all know I don't, I'm not a money preacher like that. Uh, but when I, when I sense it in the spirit, I've got to begin to pray into it. Uh, but I really felt that very strongly tonight that I believe that there's some who are going to have money testimonies in this season, that increase is going to begin to come to you, that, that the Lord is going to begin to shine and favor upon your house. And I want you to make that your declaration. Wealth and riches are in my house. I, I, I still feel that thing strongly. Wealth and riches are in my house. Come on, overflow is in my house. Increase is in my house. Prosperity is in my house. Hey, the provision is in my house. Come on. Resources are in my house. Wealth and riches are in my house. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. The last thing I want to begin to pray for, uh, the Lord has, has had me in prayer lately for Generation Z. You know, we talk about Gen X and baby boomers and uh, millennials and everything. Uh, but Generation Z is the generation of young people that are, 24 that are under the age of 24 um, those are Gen Z and much of what we see happening in our world right now even in, in our city deals with Generation Z uh, we're going to begin to cover this generation tonight in prayer and that's the last thing we're going to pray for tonight we want to lift up Generation Z um, we're going to pray that God will raise up a witness in this generation this young generation uh, for his glory and begin to save them and deliver them for his glory and for his honor Father in the name of Jesus we lift up this generation known as Generation Z tonight. We pray for the young people, God, that are under the age of 25, even under the age of 24, this generation known as Gen Z. We pray for them, we cover them, we lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for every uh, every, every baby, every child, every elementary school student, every high school student, every college student, oh God. We cover them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that this generation, we declare it is not a lost generation. We declare that this is not a directionless generation. But we pray, God, that you raise up Josiahs in this generation. May this be a generation that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. May this be a generation that knows you and does exploits. God, we pray that in this generation, you would raise up some Josiahs. That even as, as even as King Josiah was raised up as a young man, a little boy of eight, nine years old when he became king. But he was one of the greatest kings Israel ever knew because he followed after your heart. Raise up some Josiahs in Generation Z, O God who will come to know you from a very young age. God, we pray for some children to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. God, we pray that you would get some, some preteens, God, some teenagers and some babies, God, and begin to save them and deliver them. Begin to give them a passion and a fire and a fervor for you, God. May they know you. May they follow hard after you. God, may they fall in love with your presence like never before. God, we pray for this generation. We pray for Generation Z, God, that it will not be a lawless generation. It will not be a rebellious generation. It will not be a lost generation, but we war on their behalf. We pray for the soul of this generation. We pray, God, that there's greatness in this generation. Oh, God, there are, there are, there are preachers and teachers and prophets and apostles and bishops in this generation. There are engineers and doctors and lawyers. There are future presidents. There are future senators, God. Uh, there are future CEOs. There are future bank presidents and, and founders in this generation, God. So cover them right now. We pray that you begin to turn their hearts back to you. God, raise up youth pastors and children's pastors and evangelists, God, who will minister to them, who will bring the gospel to them, who will, who will, who will share your word with them. God, raise up preachers and teachers that can relate to them in ways they will understand and, and who will bring them to you, God. And we pray for a great revival in this generation. We pray that we would see this generation saved, not only by the hundreds, but by the thousands, 
by the tens of thousands, by the hundred thousand, even by the millions, God. Save, God, save in this generation, God. Save Generation Z for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You listen, I, I pray, I, I sense that very strongly about this, this finance thing as we were praying into that. I, I want you to begin tonight, even before we, even before you go to bed tonight, walk through your house and speak and prophesy to your house and tell your home, I command money to come into this house and command wealth and riches in your house. Now, some might say, well, that, that's just spooky and super spiritual stuff. Listen, this thing works. I'm a living witness. It'll work if you work it. I ain't telling you what I've heard. I'm telling you what I know, and I'm telling you what I've lived. I'm telling you what I live. This is stuff I practice in my own life. I pray this stuff in my own life, and it works. So I want you to do that tonight. Prophesy to your home. Prophesy. If you didn't, if you didn't have your debit card, your bank account statement on you earlier, lay hands on that thing tonight and command it to grow and to command it to increase. Matter of fact, begin to lay hands on every uh, bills and command them, command debt elimination and debt cancellation in your life. That debts will be eliminated. That you're going to begin to be debt free. That increase is coming. The confession I always make every day. I decree and I speak over my life when I, every morning when I when I'm in my prayer time. One thing, one of my confessions of faith is I decree and declare that my income is increasing and my debt is reducing. I declare that every day, and I want you to do the same. And I believe that God is going to favor some people financially in this season. It is possible to prosper in a pandemic. I believe provision is coming to your house because rivers are flowing, dams are breaking are open. I speak it over your life. Something good is getting ready to happen to you. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. Oh, listen, listen, last thing. Uh, back to school outreach. Uh, our back to school event is this Saturday. If you know anyone that needs school supplies, I know kids are going to be virtual, but if you know someone that needs school supplies, send them on out. Send them to our website at nhccc.org. We're going to be out this Saturday, 85th and Cottage Grove. Um, I'm sorry, 86 in Cottage Grove in the park, the big parking lot there. We will be uh, giving away backpacks. We have a medical van and all that's, uh, that's going to be there. Uh, see y'all on Saturday, those of you who are able to come out. I love you. God bless y'all. Have a good night.